Okay guys, welcome back. This will be our final video on uh, row crop cultivation. Uh, we're going to try and put all the points that we missed in the other videos into this video and this time I actually have a cheat sheet so I can try and remember the points. Uh, first of all, we're going to start out with this cultivator. If you haven't figured out by now, I'm kind of a Massey Ferguson nut. I like my Massey Ferguson equipment. Uh, this cultivator is a Massey Ferguson 440. Uh, we were lucky enough to find it on Craigslist here a couple weeks ago and get it bought. Uh, it's in real good shape. Uh, the only problem with it is the previous owner was a little bit adverse to using a grease gun and so we do have some wear issues with it, but we'll this will be our winter project next winter. Uh, anyway, this was one of the last cultivators that Massey Ferguson made and it does have the quick adjust uh, depth wheels. Uh, that's a nice feature, plus it's got the high clearance units on it so you can cultivate uh, crop when it's very tall. Uh, we will probably turn this into a hybrid cultivator. It will be half aggressive, half uh, uh, easy going. It does have the rolling shields with it. So it will be about halfway between what I call a rigid or aggressive cultivator and half between that cultivator that we showed in the other videos. The, uh, other Massey Ferguson Danish type. So let's go look at some other cultivators. Three. Okay, so we're showing you the 428 Massey Ferguson cultivator. Uh, we're really not going to get a chance to use it this year. Uh, if you can look down here at the feet, it has big sweeps on it, uh, 10 inch sweeps, and there are three sweeps per row. Uh, we call this a C shank cultivator. Uh, the Massey Ferguson 428, uh, but we haven't really needed it this year. This is the cultivator that excels when the morning glory gets big, the weeds get big, or uh, you have an extended wet period and you can't get in and cultivate. Uh, this cultivator is pretty, pretty aggressive and pretty mean. Uh, we don't use it very often. I don't like to use it. Uh, it does tend to turn up clods and roll ribbons. Uh, but there is a time and a place for it. Okay, so here we are at the aggressive Danish Tine cultivator. Uh, first thing I want to note, Deborah, show them the shovels on the cultivator itself. Uh, this cultivator has seven inch sweeps all the way across it. It has five shanks in between our 30 inch rows but it uses seven inch sweeps all the way across it. Now come up here closer, honey, and show them the sweep that runs right next to the row. Okay, so the row theoretically is right here directly in between these two sweeps. Uh, you take a seven inch sweep and you take your torch and you cut off the edge. And so we have flat edges running against the row. Uh, at this stage of the plant's development, we're not trying to cut the plant roots or stress or damage the plant. We're just trying to push up some dirt and kill any weeds that we missed. Okay. Uh, we on, on this video technique, we don't have the ability to zoom in or zoom out, but we do have the ability to start stop. So uh, this is something that I wanted to show you in the field, but I think that it will work better if I show it to you right here. Uh, this tractor on my cultivation tractor, I love to use 15, 5, 38 inch tires. Uh, they're narrow and what that narrowness allows me to do, it allows me when I'm cultivating to walk around in the row. So I'm taking the cultivator, taking the tape measure here and from there to there represents our row width. We have 30 inch rows. So I'm going to center that tape measure on the tire. We're at about eight inches there. So we can walk the tractor literally about that far without damaging the rows. We've gone from eight to 14 inches. So we have the ability to walk about six inches with the tractor. The tractor has about a foot of movement with inside the row. You can go six inches one way or six inches the other and still not be plowing out. Uh, that is very important, having skinny tires. You know, our friends down south who watch this and row crop all the time, uh, all of their row crop tractors have some version of a skinny tire like this on the tractor. And the reason for that is they wanna be able to walk around or move side to side inside the row uh, when they're cultivating. 
we're going to go up on the hill here and we're going to cultivate a little bit and you're going it's going to become readily apparent why i have to have skinny tires in order to get this rear mount cultivator to follow me around the curves i'm going to be cultivating curves on terraces and uh, I don't know if I'll show you the point rows, but she'll show you the whole field. And anyway, we've got a field that's got a whole bunch of terraces and circular roads. And so having these tires, narrow tires, when you're using a rear mount cultivator is critical. Uh, a bunch of our friends and the other members in the chapter, they use international tractors and they use international or John Deere front mount cultivators. Those cultivators they allow you to see where you're cultivating and they allow you to uh, uh, walk around inside the row a little bit or to follow a curve better without the cultivator, you know, swinging to the side. Obviously, when something's behind you, instead of right in the center of your tractor and you turn a corner, that thing on the rear swings a lot wider. So, skinny tires, I like them a lot, they're very necessary. Uh, I didn't show you this in that uh, mention it in the sorghum video but the in the sorghum video uh, I was moving the tractor around and when you do your first pass on the non-aggressive Danish tine that's behind us there you're driving in the center of the row when you come back for your second pass uh, you will try and quote quote clean up the areas that you missed the first time and you do that by crowding the cultivator one way or crowding the cultivator the other way uh, the beauty about these tires and this cultivator, or all of my cultivators, and with this spacing set up, this cultivator is about an inch wider. He's running center to center. Our shanks are 15 and a half inches uh, rather than 12 and a half or 13 or 14. But literally, you have to be driving over the crop with these tires before you're plowing out. Uh, so just a handy little thing, you know, it's real easy to see from the front of the tractor if you're running over the row then you will be killing the road behind you on the tractor. So let's head up to the... They have a very round leaf 
I really like that for the ground cover that they give us, uh, shading out the weeds. In organic farming, it's a competition. Everybody's competing for sunlight and water, and so when we have a good stand of beans and we have a bean that's a bush plant, these are bush beans, and we have a leaf pattern like these beans have, it works real good for getting the canopy as quick as possible. Uh, we are at uh, these beans. I'm pretty sure I planted them that first week of June, so we're actually at about day probably somewhere between 40 and 45 on their development. Uh, anyway, this particular variety is a uh, medium tall plant, and so he will get the canopy. He is an aggressive competitor. He will compete on hills or in the bottom ground. I'm looking back in the row and I don't know if her camera can pick it up, but there is a huge velvet leaf that survived the first cultivation and he just got killed by the rigid shank. He's laying flat. Okay guys, so the last point uh, is the direction of travel. Uh, as you can see up ahead here, we're running into some pretty good velvet leaf. It's not yield limiting. It's right about at that point. But I want to kill as many of these weeds as possible. And when I look out back, I am picking out a fair amount of those velvet leaf. Uh, but anyway, when I cultivate it, I cultivate by a pattern. In other words, I remember in my head that I went this way the last time. And when I come back for the next pass of cultivation, I want to go exactly opposite of that. I want to be going in the other direction on the same roads. So after you know your farm and after you know your field for several years, it becomes readily uh, apparent to you that you can cultivate starting at the left side of the field and heading in this direction. When you come back the next time, you can go in the other direction. Now, the other point I want to make about this field is that we're here today, but this is only the second cultivation these beans have had. Uh, we had that dry time, we planted these beans and it didn't rain on them for their first four weeks of life. And we were able to find moisture and get an excellent stand. Uh, now we've got this rain and the beans don't quite have the canopy yet, so that's why we're in here today doing this. Uh, on soybeans in this cultivator, I don't want to move too fast. If this was corn, I would be moving a lot faster. But uh, soybeans, this cultivator will throw enough dirt to entirely bury the soybeans. So, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the cultivation videos.